damage. So we get the petty theft back. Hello, good game. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch the channel. I hope you have a magical time. Make sure to like the video to help support. And today we'll be playing with Quandrix Giants. This is a blue and green giant deck. Uh, this is a deck, you know, that I was crushing on hard in Zendikar Rising. I've made it so many different ways, and uh, we've got it perfected, and now we have all these new amazing cards. Decisive Denial, Quandrix Command, Eureka Moment, Teach by Example. <laughs> uh, the deck got upgraded, to say the least, and, you know, I've not lost a single match as uh, far as the new upgrades go. That's amazing, you know, we're climbing it through Mythic. The games can be a little long. But, uh, you know, they're just so rewarding to play and grind up. You know, even some of these Yorion or monocolor decks, um, which is fun, right? Uh, the fun factor here is through the roof, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, in today's video, we'll break down the deck, talk about strategies, synergies, show you the gameplay footage, so you guys get a good idea as the viewer whether or not uh, this deck is going to be right for you and your wild cards, right? <laughs> and of course, you know, we will wrap up with our final thoughts after that. Big shout out to Unshaven Leg, winner of our Scalding Tarns. Don't miss out on our next giveaway. We have it at 30,000 subs. You can win a coaching session one-on-one, -on -one, also with a little bit of cash for yourself. And then at 35,000 subscribers, I'll be buying the current standard set for someone uh, completing their rare collection. So that's like 400-ish USD. So get in on the channel, share it to your friends, and uh, you know, subscriber button up, 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 up. You can help out by liking the video as well. If you're looking for any of the information on the giveaways, contests, uh, places to support the channel, it'll all be found in the link tree link description below or Google Hello Good Game link tree to easily find it. Uh, enough with that, though, let's break down the deck. All right, Quandrix Giants, 60 card, best of one, 4.1 average with 26 non-creatures and 11 creatures. We do have a, you know, a little bit of a Teamir split here. The red doesn't take place in the deck at all. It is that Quandrix deck. It's just splashed with the hybrid mana. Um, so the majority of the deck here is blue sourced with a little bit of green. Um, and that's just for the ramp, right? We've got 23 uh, mainlands in the deck with two MDFCs taking us to 25. And uh, a couple different ways to ramp within the deck, which is the first thing that we should talk about. You're all familiar with Cultivate. Four copies of this in deck for three mana at sorcery speed. Search your library for two basic land cards, put one into the battlefield, tapped, and then one into your hand, revealing both, of course, and then shuffling our library. You know, that's just going to propel us uh, further on into some of the heavier cost spells, uh, as we did see the average is 4.1, so we're not really casting much uh, below 4, which makes negate, uh, or sorry, not negate, cultivate for 3 a great option. We have Eureka Moment as well for 4 mana, instant speed, draw 2 cards, and then you may put a land card from your hand into the battlefield. This is great, and it will allow us to play a land on our opponent's end step, and we do have the Scry Lands in the deck, Temple of Mystery, um, and even though Moment brings the land in untapped, which may be relevant for you to remember at certain points in different matchups, but I like to go if, uh, you know, I'm not spending that mana on anything with Temple of Mystery, we get the Scry 1 to start our turn, and that's absolutely amazing. So that's our ramp, right? Uh, you know, we do have cost reduction as well within the deck via Thrix the Sun Storm. For five mana, it's a four five with flash and flying. Spells you cast with mana value five or greater cost one less to cast and they can't be countered. So that's really, really good. Um, and then of course, you know, the deck does revolve around looping all runs epiphany at sorcery speed for seven, create two one one blue bird creature tokens with flying, take an extra turn after this one, XL all runs epiphany, right? Um, we can foretell it for six mana, so we're getting a little bit of a cost reduction there as well, which is really quite nice um, because if we reduce the cost through the foretell, we reduce the cost through Thrix. Now we're ca casting Epiphany for a cost of five, um, which is really good, right? That's like uh, super, super good, and we get there, you know, immediately with Cultivate uh, as an option as well. So that's kind of the main get within the deck. Since we can reduce the cost of Epiphany so much, and we do have so much ramp in the deck, this opens up things like Teach by Example, Instant Speed for two. Whenever you cast 
or cop or sorry, whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell, and you may choose new targets for the copy. Um, and this is great, right? Whether we are copying, you know, our bounce effects to stay alive, decisive denial uh, as a fight effect, um, copying our ramp to like supercharge ourselves, uh, you know, it's all good. Uh, of course, we do want to ramp and copy all runs Epiphany if we can. I also love to copy Seagate Restoration for seven mana. Draw cards equal to the number of cards we have in our hand, plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So the first one will draw, uh, resolve, you'll get 10 cards in your hand, and then the second one will resolve, and you'll draw another 11. You'll have the majority of your deck in hand. That's gonna be all the instant speed shenanigans through the denial, through the command, through the royal, um, you know, through Thrix. It's all gonna be there for you guys. Uh, to just dominate the rest of the game with. It's gonna be hard to lose if you can copy a Seagate Restoration, honestly. But, uh, of course, we can copy All Runs Epiphany as well. We can copy Eureka Moment, Quandrix Command. It's all good in the hood as far as Teach by Example goes. And, you know, this is a card that is highly underestimated uh, by players in, in um, you know, my eyes. Because when you do cast it, your opponent is forced to counter it. If they do counter it, now you're free and clear to cast the spell that you were gonna cast anyways. If they don't counter it, now when you cast your second spell, the first one gets, like, it gets copied when you cast it before it gets countered. So it's like a lose-lose for them and a little bit of protection for yourself, which is quite nice. All right, so, you know, you guys know the main theme of the deck. As far as survival goes, we ramp into the Cyclone Summoner. This resets any aggro decks, any mid-range decks, uh, anyone really trying to accumulate board state value. 7-7 seven, seven, when it enters the battlefield. Uh, if we cast it from our hand, return all uh, permanents to their owner's hands, except for giants and wizards and lands. Uh, you know, all we have are giants in the deck, so we're not going to be bouncing our own Thrix. We do have the Brazen Borrower, which is quite nice. Uh, we should mention that. It's a 3-1 with flash and flying. It can only block other creatures with flying. Petty Theft for 2 at instant speed as the adventure to return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. This is great because we can use Petty Theft right get that tempo play slow our opponent down so we can ramp into our goodies and then we can play the borrower and then at one point we can bounce their field state getting the borrower back to our hand so we can reuse petty theft uh, which is great and of course we can lace in the borrowers with all runs epiphany uh the two birds are there and that's probably going to be how we get lethal for the majority of our games but we also have Thrix to deal combat damage as well. And, you know, maybe even the Cyclone Summoner gets in there. But, uh, you know, it's more of a defensive spell for us. Denial. Choose one at instant speed for two mana. Counter target uh, non-creature spell unless its controller pays three. Or a target creature we control fights target creature we don't control. The command for three mana. Four copies of this. Instant speed. Choose two. Return target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. Counter target artifact or in creature spell. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Target player shuffles three cards from their graveyard into their library. You know, I love that. That's so good. So we can cast the command and reshuffle uh, some of our goodies back into the library, which is amazing. We talked about the borrower here. We talked about cultivate. Eureka moments, draw two cards, then put a land card into the field. We talked about that, right? Um, you know, the snarls are in the deck here as well. Just because there are so many dual uh, casting cost cards, um, to get around being mana screwed here. Um, and it's fine to play slow. We don't have any one drops, right? So it's not the worst case scenario. And we're also playing lands with Eureka Moment uh, as well to get around that downside. So, you know, that's the deck, right? Ramp into Summoner to survive. Ramp into, you know, Teach by Example and Seagate Restoration, right? Teach by Example, Eureka Moment. So you can then do Teach by Example, Seagate Restoration. Or, you know, maybe you just have the line on lethal and you say okay i'm just going to copy my epiphany and take lethal right that's easy as well so thank you for your time and attention you know this is one of my favorite decks that i've made this set it slaps this is a powerful deck that is consistent uh against some of the top decks right uh denial can shut down the ultimatum decks it can shut down all the aggro decks um it's it's feeling really good so let me know what you guys think in the comments below as always thank you so much for your time and attention support the channel if you can by downloading Magic the Othering Arena Assistant if you're on Windows for free. Also partaking in any of our affiliate links or, um, you know, membership programs, YouTube, Twitch, Patreon, etc. Everything's found in the Linktree link, uh, as well as our giveaways and contests. Again, we just gave away the Scalding Tarns, and next up we're going to buy someone's rare play set for the current standard uh, set that comes out. So sub to the channel, tell your friends, and of course, let's watch the gameplay footage. Let's see this bad boy in action. Is it as good as HGG says it is? We'll find out here.
boosters ready. Lego. Cultivate is the ultimate booster, of course. Just sending you into space. Let's get that snarl on its way. I love snarls. I love dual lands. Triumphs. Snarls. Ugh. It's a good time to be alive. <laughs> Mono red. That's not fun. That's not fun. Don't drop anything until turn three. Okay. Well, we still just have to go for it. Rush to our giant. Could counter the Klee. Do we survive next turn's Klee? That's gonna be the question. We have our petty theft off the top, which is like an absolute lifesaver. That ensures we can hit. Um, you know, seven, bounce everything. So we could have, uh, just countered it, but, uh, I want to stop the damage too, right? Still more than I care to take, and we need just a wicked string of good luck here. So there's a weird question I have. Should we take the turn off, use Seagate Restoration? Right? We're going to get hit for four, five, ten, eleven. That's probably lethal. I don't think we can do it. I just don't think that we can do it. Maybe next turn we can do it. Because we've got the 770, but <sighs> I don't want to just give them lethal on a on silver platter. Need more giants. <laughs> One one would be nice. Oh, I should have attacked first. Whoops. Because now they can uh, block with the charger, kill a bird. I'm still gonna go for it. It's just a little misplay there on my behalf. Just take it though. Wow. It's super annoying. So at instant speed, we can fight. that thing. We could Seagate if we didn't drop a land, but I honestly don't remember. Should we risk it? No, let's play it safe. Still hit for two. So they're gonna cleave, and we can just like counter the cleave, probably, is best. Or we fight the creature that it goes to, which could be good as well. I think both do the same thing. Countering the cleave would be better though, and then just blocking the creature.
they have to cleave here. And then we smash the Annex. They hit for two. We lose our giant though, right? So we actually don't have to kill the, the robber. We should have fought before Cleave entered play. I didn't think of that. Kind of annoying. Still hit for two. We need another giant off the top to reset the field. Probably should have went for that Seagate instead when we were thinking about it, right? Even if we do get it, we're not going to be able to cast it. Because we only have two, three mana. Still have to do it though, and then just use our Petty Theft. Vix is good, but it's like not the giant. No attacks. We definitely need to defend. And we can bounce whatever that cleave goes to. Which I assume it'll be the River Running Knight. It's a lame target to bounce, though, you know what I mean? Because the Boulder Rush comes back down on top of us. In the form of the Fire Blade Charger. Just waiting. Oh, and this is actually quite bad. Oh no, the cleave won't go to their hand, just the knight. And they can't re-equip the cleave. This is a big time bummer though. Oh, are you kidding me? Nice, they can cast that too. <laughs> nice. We've been digging for that for a while. There better be a giant underneath of it. Okay, how do we survive this? That is still a ton of damage. We get the petty theft back. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we have four lands up. That's crazy. Probably just fight that. This counters the cleave, though.
Those are good cards for them. Don't get me wrong. And then if they boulder rush the champion, we bounce it and they lose their boulder rush. See? 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 Wish we had our all rounds of 50 from them. Bully. Now they lose the ability to cleave. They're just attacking it to the summoner. Okay. Champion in play, who cares? Charger in play, I care a little bit. Let's send it up. We pull the right card, we have lethal. It's not quite it. But I do like it. It's a double fight for us. Which is really good because we could choose. I don't know if we get to re choose the, uh, the effect. That would be insane if we did. And as long as they don't have a buff for that. That we don't see. If we leave it, and now we double fight. And then this is for science. We'll get to see if we get to pick a new ability here. No, we don't. It is the one you choose. That's kind of what I thought. That's why I didn't want to counter the Ember Cleave. Because I didn't want to take care of both creatures. Hello and welcome everyone to a new video they here on my down, channel. Today we have a special guest. It's Hell of Good Game, big YouTuber and they Twitch streamer. Um, we go way back. We met each other uh, over a year ago when I was a small streamer, he was a small YouTuber, and we both went a different direction. We stayed in contact, which is quite cool. And yeah, now he asked me if I want to call up on his uh, YouTube channel, and in return, he also is here on my channel. And definitely check him out on his YouTube and Twitch. Um, he is streaming also a lot, he rates us a lot. Um, you should definitely show some support to him. Uh, he's a great guy and he brews a lot. He also does many budget friendly decks. He brews his own styles of deck. It's really fun. He played a really cool deck today. Uh, Bunt deck, I will not say more. Uh, it, it took definitely a game of me. Um, yeah, definitely check it out. Um, we played against each other, one uh, best of one. Um, we choose both two decks, we played against each other, and the winner the winner deck goes to the final, and in the end, we played a final Thank match. The Lord. Uh, super fun um, <gasps> to do a call up with him. I hope we do more with him. And be nice to him, he's a great guy. And yeah, no, we'll that was a close Check one, out ladies this and video. Gentlemen. Sadly, you oh only gonna see it from his perspective. I was too stupid to uh, here. <laughs> press the record Let's button. Pile in after but that. that is actually cool. You're gonna see someone playing oh against gosh. me. But you have my camera always also on the video. So no, that, that must be uh, really a new format. And we just invented that by accident. First and yeah, the day enjoy it, guys. New have fun. changes to the deck. Feeling pretty good. All right. Land looks good. No Cultivate playing against Yorion. No Cultivate playing against Yorion. No Cultivate playing against Yorion. 
Oh my gosh. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We shall pray that we pick up Auron's Epiphany and to cultivate. Again, just looking for cultivates. Okay, is it mono black? It, it surely can't be. It has to be at least Azorius, right? Two barons. Wow. Let's just push. The tempo. A Eureka moment here would be deadly, but no. <laughs> Cultivate would still be really good. Huh. Well, maybe they're bricking on land, right? I mean, the two tomes, so good for them. They get their second land, so it's Demir. Hopefully there's no Extinction Event or Shadows Verdict. We can assume there is. Well, maybe not. It's odd that we have two Teach by Examples in hand. I'll be honest. Could come in handy later on. I mean, it would be extra handy if we already had all run or told to the side. They've played a trap card. <laughs> Thrix is cool. Thrix is cool. It applies more pressure. They're going to get 8 life through these tomes, which is wolf, as far as this borrower's job goes. <laughs> They're playing slow. This must be an all around epiphany for them. I mean, they've got double draws to the tomes again. There's so much value. Okay, over to the side. Must be counter magic. We'll play with Flash, make them regret doing that because they can't foretell and cast on the same turn and they don't have double blue to do it from their hand. So unless it's a disdainful stroke. And then on our upcoming turn, other things can't be countered. Oh, they had one from the previous turn. Okay, good for them. Hmm. 
All right, down to nine. They go up to what, 17 here? Crazy. Hmm, it was a Behold the Multiverse. Interesting, they take a bigger, badder draw. Nice scry attached to that puppy too. One blue source. We know we're safe from saw it coming. They take the scry. I mean, if we can top deck all runs Epiphany a couple times in a row, I'll be happy. Even a few more land we need. All right, another Thrix coming in. I'm sure they just have removal, right? All right, they grab four life, down to two mana. Mm, here they go up to 17, it looks like maybe, no. Where's the counter magic when you need it? Wow. Down to six, what would have been two, and then back up to 10. I can only assume. I don't really want to play a 5 and 7. We already have a 3 in play, so if they do have an event, we're like pretty screwed. So we may as well keep one creature in our hand for later. Okay, that hurts. Where's the counter magic? Teach by example, why don't you also counter spells? Do both! Be a good card. <laughs> it's in there for BMs. It probably doesn't belong in the deck, but uh, I just. Love the idea of making a, a double turn, a triple turn. A third Maze Mind Tome. Are you kidding me? Talk about luck. Here I am top decking lands. <laughs> you know what I mean? Any time now, all run. And even then, I'm sure we're just going to be running into counter magic, which is Sag. Where is it? And our turn. At some point, they're going to want to see in our hand. They'll be like, what aren't they casting, right? Uh. <laughs> It'll pay off if we get it. Right, we do need either one more land or to foretell it. And it's whenever you cast. It would be really cool if we could copy what they cast as well. Now that would be hot. They just want to kill it and gain a bunch of life, hey? Eh? That's not a bad play. It's not a bad play. If we could top deck a Seagate, that would also be ideal. If they spend all their mana... We top deck a Seagate, get a massive draw. That's our best option, I think. Pretty sure. There's an instant speed spell as well. Smart. So, I will definitely copy this Eureka moment. 
wow. And their turn. I mean, they've got so many counters, right? It's instant speed. They didn't do it last turn. If we could Eureka Moment into Flash. So if they have a counter, um, they can't counter both, right? They can either counter our copy here or they can counter the main, but if we cast the main, the copy still goes through. So they can't counter both. And then they should save their counter magic in case I pull counter magic, right? Draw four, two lands in play. Come on, we need a land. Oh, we do not get one. So close. This is their turn. And we need that land to double all runs of 50 next turn. They gain a bunch of... Bunch of stuff, though! <laughs> And the same thing goes next turn, right? They can't even counter it because we have the copy of it as well. <clears throat> now there's an awkward question. What do we want to do here? It's almost like we want to teach by example Eureka moment again, don't we? Let's push that to the side. Almost get past that. I don't it's hard hard situation. It is that Eureka moment that brought us back into the game. We need to remember that. All right, it's a good play. The regrets of the dead. Lurks among us. It's, a, it's a play, it's a move. They did the do. Come on. Do they have another counter spell? No. That was our last copy, I think. We might have one more. Yeah, we had one more. I'm glad that they're not taking that on Auron's Epiphany. I'll tell you what.
Oh, they got to see our hand. Oh, no! <laughs> Let's thin our library. And that way, we can still Thrix. Because we have to Thrix to kill Ashiok, basically. Um, with 8 mana, I'll be Thrixing with Quandrix Command on top. So putting the counters on Thrix and bouncing Ashiok. Or even shuffling, you know, these Eureka moments back into my deck. Wow, that's a phenomenal card to play right now. I wish. <laughs> this isn't going to be a good match. Yes, don't care. Go oh, blocker. I mean, we don't really care about the damage, but why not? They know we have it. They know that it deals with Ashok fairly well. I think we might even just... Oof. Well, that's a play. The plot thickens. Bounce Ashiok, and then I want these moments, please. I like them. They might counter this, we'll see. No, we're good. Could you have any more cards in hand, bro? Why didn't they counter that? They are really scared of this turn or what? Let's go for it. I would counter it if I could. So we'll know for sure if there is one or not. But now we've spent their mana, we Thrix in underneath, and Seagate shouldn't be able to be countered. I wonder if it still goes through. It sh yes, because it grabs it here on the stack, right? And then Test of Talents should frig off. Right, because now it, it can't be countered underneath. It should still resolve. I'm pretty sure. Yeah! Oh my gosh! That was hot! That was so hot! <laughs> because they could have um, countered Thrix with a, a different spell, right? We just lose it anyways, but... 
And we're going to get milled, right? Because they're playing Yorion. We're not. So they're at 47. We're down to 28. It's kind of one of those inherent advantages to it. Especially when you get fucking unlimited tomes. Alright, this is still a terrible time for us. Oh, they get our Eureka moment. Alright, so we can Cyclone Summoner, they play Ashiok, and we immediately... Oh no, this only fights other creatures. I think we see a counter spell here. Yeah. Counter their counter. We have another decisive denial already as well. Could come in handy. All right, it's like there's no way they have a mystical dispute. So we kill the three tokens. Ashok's still a problem. And let's see if we can get something rolling here. I I doubt it, but we're trying our best. I mean, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this kind of deck is ridiculous, isn't it? I'll let it through. I'd rather counter Ashiok. Right, and then bounce the shark, hit for seven. I don't know if hard casting a shark typhoon is a great idea these days. Oh, they do have that three mana up still. Okay. The regrets of the dead are the sweetest ingredients. And then, I mean, on their turn, they only have three mana, right? So we can still Cyclone some. Oh, it's a wizard, Harry. It's a freaking wizard, Harry. <laughs> It's a freaking wizard, Harry. Well, that throws a monkey wrench in my plans. Not really, though. Oh, no, that's, uh... Not what we want. Bounce it to its hands. Counters. Bounce this. Counters here. It's harder to kill. And I think that's lethal. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah! I love it. That was a sick match. Oh my gosh. Woo! We came back. We came back from it. Eureka moment. 
Decisive Denial, Quandrix Command. There are so many sick Quandrix cards right now. It's not even funny. Woof. A couple of really long, really satisfying matches. Um, I absolutely love it. I didn't know how we won either of those, but, uh, you know, I'll take it. Seagate Restoration, Teach by Example, is absolutely blowing my mind. Uh, originally, I put it in the deck just to copy Allrun's Epiphany, but then it's like, well, there's so much value from Eureka Moment, from Seagate Restoration, that I might just do those and pull all my Epiphanies organically with more Teach by Examples and then do that later too, right? So it's really cool to be able to, um, you know, use your old decks that you thought were good and just totally upgrade them. Like, you know, there's 6, 10, 14, uh, 18 new cards in this deck from the, the new set. So, you know, that's the majority or like half of them basically, right? So cool stuff. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Help support the channel if you can. Watch more videos. And of course, we'll see you soon in the next.